Hey guys, it's Tessa from HandleTheHeat.com where I love to share sweet treats with a sprinkling of baking science. And today I'm showing you how I like to roll out pie dough. Now, making pie dough usually takes less than five minutes. And if you're interested in my best ever pie dough recipe, then be sure to check out the link for that below. But when it comes to rolling out pie dough, shaping it, getting it into your pie plate, and having it bake up beautifully, well, that's a whole other story. So today I'm going to be showing you my tricks for rolling out pie dough easily to avoid cracks, to avoid the butter and the pie crust turning into a melted mess, and to have the most beautiful pie to impress all of your friends and family this holiday baking season and year round. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I already made my pie crust. This is my best ever pie crust recipe. I made it yesterday and chilled it in the fridge overnight. You can make pie crust up to three days ahead of time, the dough at least. Um, and then now I'm letting it sit at room temperature until it's nice and malleable. And I actually like to go a step further and take my instant read thermometer and stick it in my pie crust to see just how cold it is. So right now it's still in the 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is too cold to roll it out. It will be too brittle and not malleable enough so I like to wait until it starts to hit 60, 65 degrees and start to roll it out that way. Now, if you're like me and you live in a hot climate, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, my kitchen's usually pretty warm. Maybe your kitchen's just warm because you've had the oven on all day. A trick to keep your pie crust nice and cold because remember, we want the butter to be cold throughout the entire process that you're working with the pie dough. If it gets too warm, not only will it get melty and sticky and make a mess, but that melted butter will reduce the flaky texture that we want in the final baked pie crust. The colder the butter is, the more flaky texture you have, and the neater and prettier pie crust will be. So I actually like to use a marble slab to roll out my pie crust on because it stays cold. However, if you don't have one of these, you can also ice your countertops. And let me show you how I like to do that. So what I do is I grab two freezer bags and I fill them with ice and a little bit of water and I actually set them down on my work surface that I plan to use to roll out my pie crust. And I let them stand here for about five to 10 minutes or until the counter is cold to the touch. And that's really going to help my pie crust stay nice and cold, but not frozen to the point where it's brittle and can't be rolled out and not too warm to the point where it starts to melt and create a mess. Okay, so now that my work surface is nice and chilled, I'm gonna set these aside. And the favorite tools that I love to use to make rolling up pie crust quicker and easier are definitely, of course, a rolling pin. I prefer a French style rolling pin. I think it's easier to work with. Use whatever rolling pin you prefer. Then I also love to use a flour shaker. I actually use this, um, or they are, they're also called powdered sugar shakers. I love to use this to easily and quickly um, flour my work surface and you'll also want to flour the dough itself and your rolling pin and then lastly I love to use a bench scraper these cost less than five dollars at most kitchen stores and this makes maneuvering and moving about the pie crust super easy because as you'll see keeping the pie dough moving as you're rolling it out is super important so I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap my pie dough it's been sitting out at room temperature for a little while now, so it's much more malleable than it was when it was straight out of the fridge. I'm gonna dust that with some flour and then just start slowly rolling it out. And so I give it a roll, then I turn it a quarter turn and then keep doing that until it starts to flatten out. Now you wanna keep the pie dough moving in quarter turns like this because not only does this help you create an even layer of even thickness as you're rolling it out, but it also helps you to prevent the pie crust, the pie dough from sticking to the counter anywhere and tearing or ruining the entire pie once you go to lift up the dough and move it onto your pie plate. Now, the other thing I like to do is just use the palms of my hands to kind of work the edges of the pie crust so that I'm preventing any major cracks from developing. And because I iced down my counter, it's going to keep the pie crust nice and cold, the pie dough, so that I don't have to return it back to the fridge if it gets too warm. Now, if that does happen to you, if you notice that the butter is getting melty, it's sticking to your rolling pin, sticking to the counter, immediately take your pie dough and pop it in the fridge until it's nice and chilled again. You really wanna make sure that you're keeping the butter cold the entire time that you're working with pie dough, all the way until it goes into the oven. 
Now, if you notice that your pie dough is springing back at all, and if it's not staying rolled out, that probably means that it needs to relax, that the gluten needs to relax. So you can go ahead and return it to the fridge covered for about five minutes up to 30 minutes. And that relaxation period will actually help for the pie dough to roll out and not spring back. As you're rolling it out, you can see in my pie crust just how big the chunks of butter are. A lot of pie recipes will say to uh, make the dough, you want the chunks of butter to be about pea size, but I find that is way too small. And what that does is it allows the butter to get warm really fast. And again, like I keep repeating, uh, we really want the butter to stay nice and cold. So I find the bigger the chunks of butter, the colder they stay. And then you get those pockets of extreme light, crispy flakiness that's so delicious in pie crust. So as the pie dough gets bigger in circumference, as you roll it out, it becomes more difficult to keep it moving. That's where the bend scraper comes in handy. And if at any point you feel stickiness on the surface that you're working on, you can go ahead and sprinkle some more flour underneath to make sure that it stays nice and maneuverable and doesn't get stuck anywhere. Okay, so now I rolled the dough out to about a 13 inch circle for my nine inch pie pan. And the way I'm going to get it onto the pan is I'm actually going to roll the dough up and onto my rolling pin and then unroll it onto my pan. And if you notice that there's an excess amount of flour on your pie crust at all, you can actually use a pastry brush to wipe off all of that excess flour so that you don't end up with a pie crust that tastes super floury. Okay, so I'm just going to grab my pie pan and then gently unroll it onto the pan. And the reason we roll out a circle that's much larger than the actual diameter of the pan is because you never want to stretch your pie dough in order to have it fit on the pan. If you have to stretch the pie dough to fit in some way, it's likely going to spring back to its original uh, size as it's baking. So I'm just gently pressing it into my pan. And if you have any cracks or tears or weird looking pieces, you can just use your fingers to kind of smush them back together. And then I'm going to actually cut off the overhang with a pair of scissors. You don't wanna to have too much dough um, at the edges of your, your flute or the, the top of the crust. Even no matter how you end up decorating it, whether you crimp it or flute it, if you have too much at the top, it'll generally be too heavy. And then your um, crust at the top will shrink or will fall off the sides of the pie pan. So we're gonna trim off most of the excess and I'm actually going to fold it under itself to create a nice even edge. And if you have any weird pieces here, that's where you can kind of press them down and make them look pretty again. But it definitely doesn't have to be perfect. No matter what your pie ends up looking like, it's going to be absolutely delicious because you're making it with a homemade pie crust and nothing compares to that. Now at this point, you could crimp the edges with the tines of a fork or you can flute them. And I'm gonna show you quickly how to do that. My pie pan already has kind of a guide here, so I'm going to use that. And basically what you do is you just take your thumb and your index finger and then another finger from your other hand and push like this to create that flute shape. And then this will actually go in the fridge while my oven preheats. And there you have it. We have our pie crust. It's ready for either blind baking, which I have instructions for on my best ever pie crust recipe post, which I'll link to below, or you can fill it and proceed with the pie recipe that you're making. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my email newsletter where I send out new recipes and baking tips every single week, and I'll see you in another video soon.